Welcome to your chance. We are glad to have you here today, and we are glad to be here today because this is African American history. And uh, on my far left, we have Keisha, Tasha, Tasha, always <laughs> Trina, <laughs> and I'm Terry. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, this is um, we are a family show. For those who just freshly tuning in and never saw us before, we are a family show uh, in the age range of 1920s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. So, you know, just about whatever we talk about, if one of us don't have the idea of what's going on, the other one do. So, Black History Month. Oh, my God. I'm so happy to do this. <laughs> But anyway, uh, <laughs> well, anyway, I want to say, first of all, I want to give thanks to our Father, Lord Jesus, because he is the first African man, and he brought this world into existence. So I have to give glory to him, you know, for all that he did. Amen. Secondly, I have to give thanks to my husband. That's my husband, Aaron, <laughs> y'all father. Charlie, but anyway, AKA Charlie. yeah, for being a good man, I mean, you know, sticking with his family, you know, I'm not saying you have to be a good man to stick with your family, but I'm just saying, you know, that, you know, he actually stayed and helped the girls and helped me to grow into the the women's that we supposed to be. And, um, you know, and I want to give, you know, a shout out to him for being a great man in that. And dealing with all the black women attitude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and the, only male, <clears throat> the only male in the house. Especially all yours. Dramas. Especially hers. <laughs> <laughs> Your mama. Yeah, okay. Whatever. <clears throat> and then I want to give a shout out to my uh, deceased grandfather. He passed. Uh, he was a great man. His name was James Jones. And uh, he was really a great, great man. You know. So, um... <clears throat> You know, a lot of people think that African, oh, <laughs> excuse me, I just want to get one more shout out. This is the biggest shout out ever. This is, you know, for this TV station too. You know, Mr. RJ and Mr. Tyler, you know, I mean, they set this up because this is like pay forward. And, and that's what you do, you know, African American, you know, you want to try to pay forward to things, you know, and they paying forward, giving people this TV show to um, be able to educate you and you help us be educated, you know. And I want to give a shout out to them too. Thank y'all for making me a star. <laughs> <coughs> a star. -er. <coughs> oh, I got fans. Oh, you do? I got fans. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Mm. Your kids don't count. <laughs> right. The only person I know that got fans is Mama and Jada. <laughs> well, first of all, let me tell y'all something. Just because I don't straight out just explain my fans and my fan base, you know, I ain't quick to brag or nothing, but I they think, out there. Hey, y'all. I think you just did. <laughs> hey, y'all going to have to start Instagramming and Facebooking, too, like, you know. That's out of my generation. Well, I these barely two do right Facebook. Here. Yeah. Okay, so African history, you know. Yeah. So, you know, African history... Mm -hmm. It's not just from slavery, and it took two callers to call in to to let me know to find out, you know, to go back and look at my history, and I appreciate that because to me that's paid forward, you know, and I want to thank the callers who did that because um, Africans just don't start off from slavery. 
it didn't start off at slavery. It was, African was way beyond slavery, you know. I mean, you go back to Egypt, you have a lot of blacks there in African, and they wasn't just regular blacks. These are kings and queens. I mean, I, you know, I want to apologize for not having the pictures. I was so busy looking at the pictures that I didn't think to take them off and, you know, and send it to the show so we could have them so I could show you guys. But I do have a website that you could go on. So eventually you might want to get out your pens and paper and write the website down so you'll be able to see these, um, <clears throat> you know, see the sights, because you'll be amazed to see how black people look back then, you know. So, I mean, they was wealthy, they was rich, you know, and everybody got along. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, you have some bad people some here and there or whatever, but we was a family, just like you see the Chinese together, just like you see um, any other race together. But we are so big that we have family in Muslim, we have Indian families, we have Jewish families, we have uh, uh, Israel. I mean, we all over. We huge, you know. And if you wonder why I'm looking the way I'm looking right now. Uh, Harlem Nights. No, it's not Harlem Nights. It's this the closest thing that I could feel like a little queen as <laughs> far as being an Indian. Because uh, my You're grandmother. You're a queen every day, Ma. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. My grandmother, <laughs> mother is a full-blooded Indian, you know. So, and I just wanted to tap into that heritage because when I went back and I looked on the website at the Indians, it was so many black folks. I mean, with the feathers in their head, you know, with the outfit on, and I mean, you'll be surprised. And I heard we had cowboys too, you know, in the Western days. I haven't seen them pictures yet, but. When I saw these pictures, I was really amazed by it, you know, because, you know, what they show us on TV is always just, you know, pale-skinned Indians, you know. They never dark-skinned like us, Carpetal, you know. So, I mean, we go, like, way back to the 2000 B.C., the 1500 B.C., I mean, way, way back, you know. I'm Indian, too, a little bit. See? You see it? So if you ever I feel like, <laughs> I, I look more Indian tint. So it seems like you can kind of sense oh. your heritage because I can, you know, it's like you can feel that spiritual power, you know, it's a lot going on. And I think the, um, like, like they said, you know, when Columbus came over, he didn't discover anything. He didn't discover nothing. You know, what he did, he came and took everything from us. That's what he did. They came and they killed people, you know, just like the Indian. And I found out that, you know, they did a treaties and they sat down and ate. They poisoned all the Indians and killed them, you know. I mean, it's like it's like what's going on in this world right now. You know, people, if, if somebody, like back then when they was doing all that killing with the tennis shoe, you know, you get a name brand, high expensive tennis shoe, you know, somebody want to kill you for it because... A set of them taking time to get one, a pair for themselves, they want to kill you for it. So that's almost like what the pale people did, you know. And, you know, everybody is not racist, but you got these elite people that's out here that just want to control, you know. And they'll do anything to control and manipulate. And I suggest that we all need to, like, get back and look back in our heritage. And, it, you know, it might change you some kind of way and, and, and turn your life around to be a totally different person because uh, especially our youth, you really need to go back and look. I mean, don't forget about what's going on now because most of the stuff that's going on now, it's not really worth it because it's like it's just trying to take your mind off of things. It's not helping you grow what's going on now. You know, all of this uh, killing and caring on. It's killing. It was killing back then, but you still, your life still go on for the better, you know. So, um, yeah, you definitely um, have to <clears throat> educate your kids about black history. Ma. I think a lot of kids and people growing up now are very unaware. Like, they know the basics of some things, but I think 
we need to get in touch with more of our ancestors and, you know, what had happened in previous generations and, you know, and um, things like that that led up to us being who we are today. Because you'll be surprised at where we actually, you know, um, came, where we actually came from and what we actually went through to get where we at and everything. So we also have to make sure we educate our children and make sure they stay knowledgeable about who they are and where they came from. Like, you have to. And, and then it's this, it's this man back in Africa. He was a king. And, uh, you know, his name was Musu, I mean, Masan Musu. And uh, this man, you know, in the U.S. dollars, he he was like, he was so wealthy, he was like $400 billion, you know, in American money. That's how much he was worth before he died. And he was like richer than Bill Gates. So, I mean, we didn't come from no poor people, you know, or no poor generation. You know, so, and um, it's a whole lot that's going on right now that's trying to keep us from knowing who we are or coming together to be a strong nation, a strong, you know, family. You know, they just constantly do things that just keep, try to keep us from being, finding out who we are to be close to each other. I mean, we can do all of this right now. Right now, we still, we got a lot of people out here that's doing great things, great things right now, you know. So, uh, and matter of fact, we are one of them. And you can be just like us too, you know. I mean, we pay forward. We own this TV show. You can make your dreams come true too, you know. I mean, it's a whole lot you can do. We just saw a lot of programs where people just, you know, I think black folks is really starting to pick up with, with um, skills, like far as like opening stores, uh, beauty salon, you know, boutique like yo, stores huh? Boutique stores. Yeah, you know, uh, some of everything. Everybody realizing that you don't always have to be a worker, you can be an owner, you know, and that's what we used to be back in the day. We used to own and create and, you know what I'm saying, and make our own things and <clears throat> have our own businesses and stuff, but it kind of was like, it was snatched away and overpowered by, you know, what you see now, yeah. You know, so it's like people are so much in the sense of probably scared, you know, but you don't know that this is our background. This is what we do. Right. We started all of this, really. And we were clean people. We never was yeah. nasty. We got a caller. Caller, you're on the air. Welcome to your chance. Ladies, how are you? Fine. How are you doing? I'm good. You know, black folks in particular, because I'm a black man and you're black women, we just got to be honest with ourselves. We look at how far we've gone away from our culture, our traditions, our customs, and I'll show you an example of this. If we had two lines, one line said, this way to freedom. The other line said, this way to Hennessy, Hare, and Jordans. I want you to tell me which line will be longer with today's Negroes. The second one you said. Exactly. So what, I, what I'm saying is we have power in America, and that comes from our consumption, which is a limited power because as long as you got money, you can consume. But once you run out of money, you can't consume, so therefore your power is gone. But the other power we have is political power. And that just make, and that's just simply you walking up to the polls and casting a vote. Mm -hmm. And we don't use either one of them. We sat back in this city and let white people take our schools. But yet you, all of you that work, and myself, pay taxes. And they took our schools. And we still pay in school. We sit back, we pay the highest automobile insurance, highest homeowner insurance mm -hmm. in the country, and we haven't suffered from any natural disaster. All our disasters have been man-made, and we won't fight. Right. But they'll fight you right. over some mm -hmm. hair. They'll fight me over a chicken plate at a cabaret. Mm -hmm. 
we don't know, we don't know who our enemy is. Right. We don't have any culture. We 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 eighty five percent black in this city, mm-hmm. but ninety five percent of our businesses of our people who don't look like us, and in fact. Middle Eastern don't even own that much business in their own homeland. Right. Yeah. So we we start to not only start teaching our kids where we come from mm-hmm. and whose shoulders we stand on, and we got to start enacting it. I'll give you another example. We all read the Bible. They say Jesus' hair was like wool. His feet were like bronze. Right. Right. But when Ebony Magazine in 1969 put a picture of black Jesus on there, Negroes boycotted the Ebony and almost put it on a business. Oh, my God. We got, that. we full of safe self-hate. Right. Wow. When we talk about Dr. Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, only thing we think about is the first thing when I say, I have a dream. Mm-hmm. I hope little white boys will hold little black boys' hands. Mm-hmm. Martin Luther King was way more than that. Mm-hmm. And if you think about how they taught us about Martin Luther King in our school, Martin Luther King was a punk. But when you become of age and you come older, you understand, no, he was a hero. Right. That man told us to boycott Coca-Cola. He told us to boycott Wonder Bread. He told us to boycott milk. He told us to boycott uh the so we'll stop riding the bus, but Negroes in today can't boycott nothing. Right. Negroes wanted to boycott the 1917 bistro because this man served food to a Republican. Mm-hmm. He's in business to sell food, mm-hmm. but we boycotted him. Right. You see, we got to teach our kids. I want you ladies to look up Robert F. Williams. This was a black man from North Carolina who was the president of the NAACP. He got tired of protesting. He got tired of marching. He got tired of singing. He got tired of sitting down. He decided to use what was legally right, and that was to pick up rifles. And the the black folks turned on him, just like the white folks turned on him. The man had to escape to Cuba. Because he couldn't even live in America, but he was fighting on behalf of us. Now look at our look at our NAACP in this city. They only exist to sell chicken. They don't fight for you. They don't fight for me. Right. So who do we have to fight for? Us? We've got to wake our children up and tell them from which they came, so they can stop killing each other. Right. So they can understand we're not the enemy. Right. It's a me- black. If a black man makes fifty thousand dollars a year and a white man makes fifty thousand dollars a year, I'm not your enemy. Right. The enemy is the government. They mm-hmm. got the money. Right. Right. We all in the same boat. You, you know. And then last point I'm gonna make. There was a time in America when if you wanted benefits, and your mother will be able to answer this. Maybe you ladies are younger enough. You may not understand. But listen to this. There was a time in America. If you want the benefits, you work full time. Mm-hmm. If you didn't care about benefits, you work part time. You got individuals working two full time jobs and don't get benefits on the job. Mm-hmm. You got people working 30 and 40 years on the job and don't get a pension. They tell you to get a 401k. Mm-hmm. But if you can't afford to live today, how can you afford to put away money in a 401k? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So ask yourself who voted for that? Who elected for us to move to that type of society? That's what I wanted to ask you. What do you think? You think they scared because, um, you think they scared of struggling? Like, you know, because if they, if they don't stand up to the people or, you know, that, oh, they're going to, you know, make hard time for them. So now they got to struggle and that's why they not, uh, sticking together or they not trying to change. What well, ladies. I'll let you in on the secret. It's just between you and me. We ain't going to tell nobody else. Okay. Close, <laughs> <more laughs> Close your it's ears, more rest of the world. To them. <laughs> but we, we won't get together because white people think it's black people taking jobs. Black people think it's the Mexicans taking their job when it's all of us against them. They are afraid. That's why they're killing us. That's why, they pass, that's why you get a dollar menu. That's why you can eat potted meat. That's why I'm so cheap. 
because they want you to kill yourself because it's more of us than it is of them. Yeah. And any time a black man lay down with any other race or woman, that baby going to be black. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. why they come after us. Right. And right now they, they sit back with the, They don't even have to put on the thinking cap to kill us. All they got to do is drop a couple of guns, some dope in the neighborhood, and mm-hmm. we kill ourselves. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's just so simple. How many, how many times have you seen in the last week Teenagers, 20-year-old men, four of them shot in the drive-by. Women found naked, set on fire. How, what are we, we doing worse than the Klan. Mm-hmm. Because we don't know our enemies are, and we don't understand from which we came. Right. But everybody, every black person has read that Bible. Every black person has been to that church, but we don't act on it. We act as if Jesus was a punk. Right. Jesus was a strong man. Yes. Was a, he was an activist. He got angry, but we won't get angry. Right. Jesus turned, did he not turn over the, the tables with the money changes? Right. Yes. Didn't he do that? Yes. So don't tell me Jesus was a punk. Mm-hmm. So it's need for a black man to stand up, first and foremost, because right now we are in order because black women lead us. We are in order. And you know what though, but uh and they don't what they don't realize is Jesus is so powerful. That's our father and he is black and then they don't realize that we have his power too. His power been working on me ever since I was a little girl. And if people could realize that that power will work for them, but you have to have faith and you have to believe, you have to stand by your faith. I mean, if somebody pulling a gun to your head, if somebody about to stab you, you don't scream and holler and take off running. You call on Jesus' name. You call on that. You stand strong. And fit. He will protect you. And see, people don't have that, that, that strength. The Indians had it. The, uh, the uh, Jews, I mean, the Israel, they had it. They had all of them, the, the, the gods and stuff coming. We, that stuff is still going on right now today, and I'm living proof because it done been in my life like over and over and over, so I know he's real, and that's why I'm glad I'm on this show so I hopefully people could listen and, and, and go back in their history and then start reading the Bible and taking the word for what it really is and um and just you know i mean you're gonna have obstacles gonna come and and try to dis- keep you from having that f- strong faith because if they can take if they can steal your thoughts and your mind and take away that 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 thought that you would have that be strong in jesus name and they don't want you to use that name because that name is a powerful name i mean he is a i am god and he go his name is anything that you want it to be as long as you have faith in him. But that Jesus name for real, oh, they, won't, they don't want you to use that name because that name will protect you. It really will. Well, the thing about it is it's okay to lean on God and it's okay to lean on Jesus. But at the same time, you can't keep letting people be violent towards you right? and you do nothing. Oh, uh, yeah. And I don't have to put my hands on you to be violent towards you. Right. I can simply take your schools away from you. Mm-hmm. I can simply keep you unemployed. Mm-hmm. I can simply give you crack cocaine in your neighborhood. That's violent. Yeah. And we together ain't leaning on Jesus. We, we, we know about Jesus, but we ain't using Jesus. Well, we have to pray to we, put we, our enemies. We, they All they have to do is pray in the morning. Every time you get up in the morning, pray for your enemy and pray that all enemies you put them in Jesus hand. If people start doing that, he'll he'll take care of it. Well, I'll put it to you like this and I'll even make this my last point. Mm-hmm. And the I love Saul. Saul, Jesus, God sent Saul on a mission, didn't he? Yes. To wipe out the Malachites. And the Malachites were people who were being disrespectful towards God's people. He told Saul to go over there and said, destroy everything. Saul didn't destroy everything. He brought back the fatted calves. He brought back the gold. Mm -hmm. And Jesus punished him. God punished him for not following his commandments. So I'm simply saying, if you're reading that parable or you're reading that passage, it's up to us to fight back our oppressors. We can't keep letting our oppressors steal our futures. Right. And they're stealing your babies, my baby, future mm-hmm. with bad legislation. And we got to come together and fight. 
and it's up to black. I say I think it's up to the black woman, you Keisha, you Tasha, you Trina, to tell your men that you date to change their thinking because we got stinking thinking, and they need to be leaders, and they need to coalesce. They need to bond with other black men and say enough is enough. Stop mm-hmm. fighting each other and fight the oppressor. So I say peace. Peace. Thank, Thank you. you. Power to the people. Thank you. <laughs> wow, that was deep. <laughs> Thanks for calling in, calling. Yeah, that was deep. Go to break. <clears throat> we're gonna go to break. Well, we're we gonna Did go to break right to now. Before we go to break, or what? Okay. We'll be right back after this break. Did I know right from wrong? Somebody tried to preach the gospel to me. I didn't listen. I fell down on my knees. I was just a foolish person at that time. This is your chance, and we have Jada with us. She's 19, so she's a young generation. Hey, y'all. <laughs> so what you think about African-American, uh, Jada, you know, our generation, you know, the way the world is going right now, you know? Well, so- like, actually, like, I was just talking, like, I was working last night, and, like, I was talking to, like, some of the people I work with, and I'm like, some I never in life seen this many black people come together I'm like some for nothing. I'm like, but then I'm like, they come together for a party. They swag surf together. But then once you leave the club, they just be like, oh, all the problems be going on. Everybody just like some nah, just we just gonna go our separate ways. Like, like nobody like, know each other. Again. Like nobody know each other and exactly. stuff. Wow, that's deep. That's what that's what he was saying to the caller. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Now, <clears throat> now people, what it says is this. Stand for something or you'll fall for anything. And right now we separated, and that's what they want. So by us being separated, you know, nothing's, you know, people not going to advertise things on TV to, oh, unity. And you know what I'm saying? They're not going to force that, and they're not going to tell you that, oh, you know what I'm saying, coming together and make a difference because they don't want that. Because like he said, like, we are powerful. If we all come together, we are powerful. It is way more than us than anybody. And but it's not just, too, that we just powerful, but we can do things. We have contractors. We have uh That's people. what I'm saying. Like, yeah. we, we just, we, we can do everything. Everything We're, that they can. Yeah, yeah, we can do everything. We can own everything that they own. We can. But it's all about coming together. And at the end of the day, when you think about it, too, it is how people are being raised up to, you know, because you have certain people who's not introducing that. You get told, oh, you go to school, somebody hit you, you hit them back. Not to, well, try to talk it out, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You get the negative aspects versus the, pod- the positive that you're supposed to give to your child to go out here to know that I can make friends with other people. We so standoffish, we will go to a public setting, and we would rather not mingle with nobody and just be to ourselves. You know, instead of just getting to know your counterparts and getting to know your people, we're so standoffish. Like, I can go and you can be sitting over there. You ain't got nobody to talk to. I ain't got nobody to talk to. And won't say say nothing like, oh, hey, how you doing? You know, what's... But but you be on, but they be on Facebook behind the scenes Mm -hmm. with all this courage behind (laughs) just all this communication. But you're right. They won't say anything. You can barely get up. Oh, we had a call. We got a call. Okay. Carla, you're on the air. Welcome, Welcome your to chance. your chance. Good, e- good evening, ladies. Good evening. Hi. I'm glad to see y'all again. I've been sick, but I, I've i been thinking about y'all because y'all have some good shows on. I am the east side lady so <laughs> far. <Hi. laughs> and um, I want y'all to understand something. And uh, I, I don't talk about nobody unless they're doing wrong against the, against our people in the city of Detroit, because I'm gonna fight for the city of Detroit. We got some people downtown that sit on the city council, and they want to run us, but let the white people do whatever they want to do. And one of one of them name is uh, Miss Kitty. 
I hope she hears me because I know she listens to this show. You, you young ladies are fighting for the city of Detroit. You are fighting for the people in the city of Detroit that's been here practically all their life. Them fools sit down there at the city county building and they talk against us. They talk against the people that's supposed to get some help from the city of Detroit, and they don't want to do it. But I'm one of those people that will talk about every damn one of them. Excuse my expression. They're rotten. They don't want to help the young people in the city of Detroit. They don't want to do anything but sit up there and take the money and go for Duggan. Go for Duggan. Duggan don't like us. <laughs> And they should know that. But Duggan is the one that they're going to vote for. And I'm saying it on y'all station, and they know who I am. They know who I am. <laughs> I have went down there ever since Coleman Young started that place downtown. He fixed it up for us to have something in the city of Detroit. And these people that's down there right now is giving it up. Some of them make $200,000. Some of them make all kind of money. And we got Poorest senior citizens in the city of Detroit that's been living in a nasty building, but they want us to pay for it now. But they making all the money, but, but they want greed. Us other black people to pay for it. That's greed. You know, you that's reap what greed. you sow. They're trying to choose and see if you're going to do it. Because they're supposed to go and pay for that building so them people can have some place to live. They're putting the money in their pocket. That's greed. Oh, so. that's right. Not that's in greed, their pocket. So. <laughs> Anything they want to do with it. But see, they don't like me because, and I don't care. I don't care. I'm here because I was born in the city of Detroit. A lady just called me today. I haven't seen this lady since I was 17 years old. And she lived on Benton and the project. And I lived on Ben between Hastings and the Bars when I was a little girl. And she talked to me and she said, I'm so bad. I don't know how she got my number. But she said, your brother, Showboat Hall, is he already? I say, my brother passed away. I say, but you know what? We're still doing the same thing for Detroit. And I, I'm, I love you women. You women that's sitting up there, y'all fight for the city of Detroit. And I don't know half the people that know y'all. But I'm glad y'all on this show, because y'all don't pull no thing. You say what you mean. And I'm so proud of you all. And I hope y'all keep up the good work. Don't let nobody talk down to you or misuse you or anything. And don't go down into that city council. That damn woman named Miss City, she needs to be shot. <laughs> thank you, Miss Eastside. And thank you for taking my call. Right, thank, thank you. Thank you for calling in and calling. <laughs> thank you. She's going to get us beat up down here. This <laughs> <laughs> uh, kitty going to be calling the show. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jada, any other experience? What would you do probably to change, you know, things for the young generation? Or what do you think we can do better? What can they do better to change this world? Or what do y'all want this world, you know, us to change in this world, to make the young people come out? And Honestly don't know is that bad yeah it's that bad <laughs> so i just be like anti-social i'm like yeah i'm just staying in my little bubble right now so have you ever thought well you did thought about making a way out like in your own business and everything like that but mm, yeah so like my business is like it's very diverse and it's like it's better like this is i just can't deal with a lot of people it's mm. stressful well you would love to uh bring a lot of youth together and you know so yeah, that like we try to but it's like it's always a little problem or a little situation it's just like dumb stuff like oh you stepped on my shoe or you did this and it just be like oh, you looked at me that's, wrong yeah and it's like it's childish like we're too mm -hmm. grown to be acting like we're five-year-olds like that's just crazy right uh I, I be wondering i be wondering where do this power come in where we gotta feel like we gotta be in control we gotta show that we bad you know and some of them never fought in their life you know i mean what is this? is in a gene what is this this power connection image. thing that huh image image is everything to the youth actually oh image is everything so what positive like fundraising we can do that would get the young people to come together 
what would y'all what's something well, that y'all would like to come to that you think you can we can get a lot of people to come out on your age well you gotta trick them Oh no, <laughs> beach, no beach parties would be nice. Like if it's a party, they'll come. But, it's but see, yeah, but it's see, like, you gotta see, treat them. Okay, right. you gotta right. trick them. She said you gotta <laughs> trick them. Like, right. Free right. stuff, oh, and then yeah. And that before is, we get the party started, we need to get on there and have a conversation with them first. Like talk, you know, right. speak to them before they start that party. That's why everybody go to the games. They like some. Oh, they like some. They always passing out free stuff. They like oh free stuff. They passing out earmuffs. Oh yeah, I'm coming, bro. Like that. That just be like y'all are crazy. <laughs> okay, then that'll work right there. We probably could get some free stuff, right? Yeah, to donate. We're so gonna have to do out. something in the summer to bring these kids together, and then we're gonna have a speech and a talk, a real good one to them, you know. Yeah, yeah. Talk take about this call. How to come together. Yeah. Hello, Carla. Welcome to your chance. Hey, how y'all doing? Fine. How uh, you doing? You gotta wake up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try to wake up. Your but, energy uh, level is low. <laughs> if you get something like the rappers in the city. And then, like, show up and everybody can come together and we could talk about some stuff, get some advice to each other. What, we, oh, yeah, that's, a, that's a good... That's well, a I good heard idea. the rapper part, but I didn't hear nothing else. He so. said get rappers to come out and, you know what I'm saying, come out and actually like, help perform as well. and, like, talk to them yeah. for real. Because that's really come out grab the attention. That's true. Because right. I feel like, yeah, we anti social in the city. We are. So. We are. Oh, yeah, because I just but, did yeah, that's it. We need everybody to <laughs> look you, out Carla. for one another. We need everybody to stop video taking pictures and actually help somebody. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, but like, like, like brothers and sisters. What else? Oh, the caller gun. <laughs> are you? Are I'm you going, on the show? Yeah, he sounded like he was a young guy too, but that was really a Thanks good. Thanks for calling, caller. Yeah, that was good. I thought I was gonna ask you a question, but you know. I think he said that was all. <laughs> 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 but that is a good one. People would come out for like if you was to get some people that people look up to, especially young kids. Mm -hmm. Um, they tend to look up to a lot of our what are they called? Like entertainers. Our our yo local entertainers. Right. Yeah. They look up to them, so it'd be nice if they can come out. Like you know, mm -hmm. maybe something we can start. You know, somebody. People can call in with suggestions. Maybe we can start a fundraiser, see if we can get some um, yeah. local big names out here. Yeah, and if any of the stars are watching, you know, I mean, because we on YouTube, we everywhere like now. So if any of the stars are listening, rappers or whoever you are, and you want to participate, and, you know, we get something going so we can have a voice for our children, you know, and put some, some positive thoughts in their ears, and and let them be entertained too. You know that'll be that'll be good. Give them the wealth, uh, our email. I don't know right now. <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> Nobody. Yeah, don't know. look at me. Uh, but we'll have it. Uh, is is your chance? I think it's your chance. Is your five, chance five out? At your, outlook dot com. Yeah, your chance five at outlook dot com. Oh yeah, and your and and uh Facebook. Well, I'd rather for it to be on the email per, per, private, not okay. Or uh Facebook. Our Facebook is your chance five, the number five, just your chance five. But you know, if we have any you know stars who would love to give back, you know, a lot of y'all have got started here and left. You know, I mean, hey, come back and pay forward. You know, that'll be nice. And, I mean, you could pop up on our show anytime, you know. If you happen to be in town, we we on every Sunday. I mean, every, every other, other Sunday, Sunday, the first and the third Sunday of the month. Yeah. I mean, that goes five for to, anybody. Uh, five to six. Not just entertainers, too. Like, you know, if you... If you're a comedy person, you want to do comedy. That's, that's entertainment. Just entertainment. Just period. Right. Entertainment. Anybody. Anybody right. that want to give back. If, even if you just somebody that want to get up and speak and it's positive. Mm -hmm. Something that we really need to hear. You know. Yeah. Because we really need to reach out to our kids. We need to grab them back. And these parents need to really wake up. You know. These are your babies out there. Are you that scared of your child? That you, you, you know. I mean, you might think. 
Oh, they ain't going to listen to me if I say this to them, if I say that. Trust me, they listening. They listening. Oh, yeah, because I was just, like, <clears throat> listening to this one girl. Like, she was talking. She was like, yeah, but for some reason, when I yell at my kid, she don't listen. But when my when my husband do it, she, he, they be scared and everything. And then they're like, so I'm sorry, Dad, this and that third. We'll just, like, some, put some bass in your voice. Like Elise, like, God. Some better whoop them kids. We have a caller. Carla, you're on air. Welcome to your chance. Hey, how you doing? Fine, hi. Hey, how you doing? Oh, we doing, doing fine. How you doing? All right. My name is Jabir. Your name, Derek right, or Tim? Let me come on phone down. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I think it's your TV. Yeah. My name is Jabir. How you doing? Is that I'm for- looking at y'all. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> okay. What do you see? <laughs> hey. Hey. Hey, listen, I just want to respond. I see four beautiful. Thank you. Did it get cut off? Four beautiful women of the future. Oh, for our people, no doubt. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Are you a, are you a... All right, I, anyway, let me turn on my TV so I can give you my commentary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Better hurry up. But anyway, okay, I just wanted you. to say that, uh, you know, there's a lot of... All right. There's a lot of ills to. Who you? You can't talk to two people now. Yeah, <laughs> you giving us some dead air now. There's a lot of ills affected. <laughs> it's like you talking to us and somebody else. You gotta focus on us. He hearing his stuff on the TV. Oh, so you like... hearing yourself? That's what it is. Okay. Okay, Carla, we might have to let you go till you get yourself together, cause we got a lot of dead air going okay, on. Okay, just call, call us back. back. Carla, you're on the air. Welcome to your chance. They hung up. They hung up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, just call back, but don't try not to listen to yourself on, on a I, I understand. The TV down yeah, it happened to me too when I call in, so I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um you know, um we have like um like you know, a lot of people might not know this, but we have like uh you could go on Google top five warriors, African queens. I mean, you know, they were bad. They, I mean, like fighting swords, riding horses, doing some of everything, you know, that you just don't know. Okay. We have a caller. He might be back. All right, caller, he go ahead. Go. He okay. Go. <laughs> so, um, oh, he mm-hmm. and then, you know, um, that's almost like Black Panther. Yeah, the, the warriors, warriors for the women. Mm-hmm. Don't so, tell the movie. Everybody I'll know that from the previews. Them. You have to see this movie. It'll give you some insight of how we are, how we were. Like, y'all have to see this movie. It's really good. So it is some connection to black history. It's connection to us as black people. How I've we are, tried. how they hid some of the stuff from, of course, the white people. Because, you know, they took everything. They only let them know so much. But... They hit their whole little city, and because everybody thinking where they from, it's like a poor little country. No, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. How everything was before we were slaves. You, right. You have to go see the movie. Really good movie. Okay, we're going to take this caller Three. right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hello, caller. Welcome. Did I hang them up? No, what? they I mean, hung up. up. Oh, I thought I was hung up. They ain't messing with us today. Right. Okay, um, and then I want to, um, if you want to write this down, you can go to African history. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. African American history, and it'll show you a lot of uh, videos and pictures of uh, us, as far as being Indian, being uh, uh, Egypt, being in Egypt. Uh, we have a caller. Let's take this call right quick, and then. Okay, we're not gonna answer no more callers because they keep hanging up. <laughs> I was gonna say his name, but I ain't wanna say it wrong. I was gonna say don't call back. With this, I'm, <laughs> this, I'm pushing the wrong. No. Um, no, he just keep hanging up. Right. Okay. Now Appreciate we have it's this other site called Google. I mean, Google this site is um well you might have to go on the website for it. it's like www dot I'm just here to make you think dot com. 
I'm just here to make you think dot com. Trust me, you will enjoy this site, you know. So it's the untold truth about American history. Mm hmm The untold truth about American history. Yeah, thank you, Keisha. And then uh it's this other one, it's a Google site. Um it's a Hebrew um uh, Don't ask me. <laughs> No, I know Ab that. Aboriginal. Abra uh, Abra uh, I can't pronounce that Copper word. Copper colored tribe. Yeah, um, I know that word. Abara, no. Well, anyway, it's Hebrew, <laughs> and I'm going to spell this word. It's A B O R I G I N A L. Aboriginal. Aboriginal. Aboriginal copper color tribe. <laughs> That's the Indian tribe with black pe people on there. I mean, you're going to see black folks with the whole Indian, um, the, the feathers, everything. And it's a lot of us. You know, it's just us being Indians, real Indians. We're going to take this caller. Hello, caller. Welcome to your chance. Okay. <laughs> keep it moving. Yeah, keep it moving. Now, it's another website. Now, this might be kind of disturbing because this website right here, it shows what they did to us. Um, okay, it's the 10 evil experiment done on African American. That's, that's the, uh, you could Google that. 10 evil experiment done on African American. Now, these are people like when you go on the hospital and you go on for a surgery or whatever, you're supposed to go for surgery, but they in there experimenting on you. And, uh, or they've been doing this for the longest, taking organs way back then, experimenting on everything. They did so much damage to these black folks before we was born, before my mother was born, before her mother was born. They did so much. They blind you. They did some of everything. They give you medicine to, to experiment on you to make somebody else better in they race and um they did so much damage to these people it was hard for me to look at it and uh they they not only uh when they just had a little something wrong with their leg they actually took all their whole leg and i mean they just did a lot they 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 hit somebody in the head and somehow they open it up the the, mm. the spearmint on their brain while they still alive and they bleeding out it was, you know, it's it, it's horrible, and they doing this stuff right now today too f to us, you know, and um, you know, it's like here we is, like the man, the last caller a, a while back said that, you know, we and like you said, Jada, we step on somebody's shoe, we get mad, you know, you bump a little bit, or you looking at somebody, they think you looking at them funny, but you might be looking past them. What they ready to do? They ready to uh, kill you. But yet these people killing us for real. You know, they actually doing bad things to us. They smile in your face now. They really smile in your face and then they turn around and they hurt you. You know, I mean, and I don't understand how the people downtown, wherever they at, sitting on the board or whatever they, whoever trying to run things for us, they not really, I mean, how many years, I'm, we done been going through this for years and years and years. And every time we put somebody in there, they're not doing nothing. Now, we have somebody great. And I know Comey Young is a good man. I mean, you know, no, I don't know him totally personally. But I've been around. And you can listen to a person. You can sense a person. I mean, all of them other folks that we had in there that was uh, black American, brown American, whatever, I didn't vote for them. You know, I mean, you know, some people just going by titles who we know. Oh, this many people know that person. Oh, this person could get money for us or whatever and stuff. They don't want to put the real fighters in there. They don't really, they don't want the real fighters in there because they don't want us to have anything. You know, and we need to stop joking around with each other. We only have four more minutes. I'm going to take this last caller. Caller, Hello. you're on air. Welcome to your chance. Hi, ladies. How are you? Fine. Hi. How are you? Okay. I hope when you all come back, you brought a lot of subjects out, and we need to talk about it. So I hope when you all come back, we can talk about us 
because we are the original people. Everybody came from us. Every, the answers are all within us. So, you know, that would be a great topic when you all come back to discuss that. And I just love you, ladies, and you have a great day. Thank you. you. Too, Thank, Thank you for you. calling. You too. Yes. And, and, you know, that's what, you know, a lot of this stuff is scary, but it's even more scarier, you know, because, okay, now I can see that we go through things out here and, um, and, and they might be killing us one by one, two by two. We don't know how many, but every time something, they do something, something turn around. I pray, I pray for our enemy. I put, I, I pray for our people. I pray for the protection around us. All of us, not just my family. And, uh, and I know there's other warriors out there too praying because when we do that hard praying, God would turn the tables and they still not waking up. That boy done went and killed 17 people in that school and, and injured 15 of them. You know, they sitting up here talking about mental health, mental health. That had been one of us doing that. Oh, we would have been we would have got life. Yeah, we would have got the, life. We would have been under the, the ground. The, no, we all shot up. The black boy who um was getting bullied in school, and he went outside and shot outside, and they charged him with, like, men's to society or something? What? I didn't hear about that one. But, I, wow. you know, especially our young <laughs> people. No. Don't let this pressure get to you. Don't stop thinking about killing yourself. Think about doing something to better our world, you know, because it's not worth going to hell for it because you will go to hell, you know. I don't been on my deathbed twice, and I know there's an after uh, spiritual world, but I'm just saying stop killing yourself. Find a better solution. It ain't, it's not that much. Everybody going through something, you know. I have people look at me and, and hurt my feelings, and I ain't did nothing to them, but they're not going to break my spirit. Don't let them break your spirit, you know. I mean, God has something in you that he wants everybody to learn from, you know. So uh, I know this is a wicked world, but look, what you do on this earth is what you're going to take in heaven. So you want to do your best to do your best for everybody so that you can have something great up there in heaven, okay. Because these fools out here now that's doing this killing, that doing all of this stuff, they're gonna pay for it. They gonna get it, they gonna get it back ten times and more. You know? So, um, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. You just, know? just always try to do good. You never know who's watching. You never know what job or position because your life is a certain way right now. You don't know who you may become. So watch the things that you do because they can come back to haunt you and just, just do good, cause you, you never every somebody's always watching. That's always All that's time. true. That's true. That's why I try not to be so mean no more. <laughs> but that's good, as long as you try, you know, because you do have to start somewhere and try, you <laughs> know. Try. That's some good. Some days I just be like, it's uh -uh. hard. I'm like, uh -uh, but at least you facing my it. Tongue today. Mm -mm. Yeah, but at least you try, <laughs> you know. And each time you try, you get better and better. Some people don't try; they get worse and worse. You know, at least you try, you know. And please, once again, educate your children about our history, our background. Because I started to um, realize that I don't think they really discuss it like that in schools anymore. No, no they don't. They're not no. really it's talking the about. Same thing no, because I'm finding out things that I didn't know. Yeah, like, it's not in depth about where like we got a lot of black inventors yeah a lot of stuff we the done same created mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so yeah, always the museum and but at the same time we still need to get back to before slavery who yeah. we were before, before that. slavery so that's all we know they don't never make movies to talk about how we were when we were kings and queens that's exactly. why we're gonna bring we're gonna bring some pictures in we're gonna do some things we're gonna do some stuff but anyway this is your chance and hey you with our family and thank you for having us and i enjoyed you guys you know because you are my family too and we wanted to say see you next time <laughs> and have a Bye -bye. blessed day have, have a, a blessed day happy black history month Yes. <laughs> <laughs>